name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO and founder of Third Stage Consulting Group. We're an independent technology agnostic digital transformation consulting firm. Wanted to chat today about the recent SAP failure at Revlon, uh, which is one of the more unmitigated disasters that we've seen here in recent years. And I think over time, this one will end up rivaling uh, Hershey's when they had the major disaster, you know, right at Halloween or Easter uh, during one of the peak seasons for them. I think this will end up going in history, unfortunately, as one of the, the major ERP failures. And this isn't the first or the last, apparently, from what we're seeing here in recent months and years. Uh, Little, uh, the German retailer, is another major failure in recent months. Uh, National Grid, uh, Haribo Candy, uh, more recently, Hertz just recently announced a, a lawsuit against, against Accenture for their digital transformation failure. So some pretty big name companies are, are struggling with their digital transformations, which makes us wonder if those big companies with those types of resources are unable to muster up the, the knowledge and the maturity and the internal resources, external resources they have at their disposal to make their project successful. What does that mean for the rest of us? Those of us that aren't Fortune 500 companies that don't have uh, the, the war chest and the, the cash and the resources and the maturity and the sophistication to be able to make these projects successful. The good news for, for the rest of the world out there is that these are pretty easy mistakes to fix. These are, in my opinion, uh, unacceptable mistakes that should never have happened, especially for a company of that size and, and a project of that size. Now, just to set the backdrop, what happened here with, with Revlon is when the, um, when the failure first broke was because they had announced in their SEC filings, uh, first of all, that they couldn't file their financial reporting or they were going to be late because of the SAP implementation. They couldn't get their hands on the numbers fast enough to file in time. And then the second phase, when they actually did report the results, they indicated that the SAP project was a failure. They had a bunch of write-offs and costs that were incurred as a result of that failure. And those two things combined caused the stock to drop 7% in one day. And it also led to an investor lawsuit against the company. So pretty, pretty major train wreck, extreme example of what not to do on your project, which is what makes these uh, sorts of failures interesting to study is it, it gives us some insights is what not to do and more importantly more importantly what should we be doing to make our projects more successful so the first lesson from this revlon disaster which you can read the entire blog via the link in the description below for this video on these on my youtube channel you can you can take away from this that first of all the implementation risk should have been well understood they should have been well documented they should have been well quantified and ultimately they should have been mitigated. And none of those things apparently happened in this case. Probably the most telling uh, reason that I come to that conclusion is because when they went live in the first phase of their project, they went live at their South Carolina plant, which is one of their larger plants apparently. And in that plant, once, the, once that plant went live on SAP, they weren't able to ship product, they weren't able to fulfill customer orders they lost a lot of sales as a result of not being able to track customer orders. And keep in mind, Revlon's selling to major big box retailers and uh, people that probably have a pretty low tolerance for uh, for inability to ship. So I suspect that the, the number of lost sales is pretty significant for these guys. And so in my mind, that's unacceptable. They should have never gone live. They should have caught these problems before they went live and they should have delayed the go live if that was the case. I'm not sure how they got to the decision to go ahead and go live anyway, or if they even knew about the risks. The third stage was not involved uh, in this uh, particular project, but it's it's really important to uh, make sure that you you have a, an effective risk uh, management and an effective risk mitigation process and mechanism in place to ensure that you don't go live and, and let those sorts of things happen. And that's something that a technology agnostic consulting partner an advisory firm like Third Stage Consulting can provide as part of your SAP or ERP transformation. So that's the first lesson is effective risk mitigation. That didn't happen with Revlon. If it doesn't happen with your project, chances are fairly high that you're going to run into similar problems. So that's a key is make sure that we've got effective risk mitigation in our, in our overall transformation. The second thing is making sure that we have a clear vision for what our operating model is going to be and that we've worked through any sort of issues or misalignments with what that operating model is going to be. And that's okay that we have them. Every company has them, especially when there's acquisition. In the case of Revlon, they had just acquired Elizabeth Arden, which is another big company that they were trying to merge and integrate into the core Revlon operations. 
and there was apparently some misalignment and those operations were not integrating well at the time they're trying to overlay SAP on top of that. So it's no wonder that there were problems when those sorts of issues had not yet been worked through. So the lesson and takeaway here is make sure that we have a clear target operating model, clearly defined a business blueprint, not an SAP blueprint as, as SAP or your system integrator may refer to it, but a business blueprint for what our target operating model is going to be, what our organizational model is going to be. If we have a shared service model that we're moving towards, making sure that we've we've done that and we've, we've defined what that shared service model is, including our processes and roles and responsibilities, all that good stuff. That stuff should be figured out before you start implementing SAP. And the problem with the industry is that most of the time, system integrators and the software vendors are economically incentivized to convince you to do otherwise, to convince you to do something that runs against what's in your best interest. So in those cases, what ends up happening in most cases is that the system integrator or vendor is going to try to convince you or pressure you into implementing SAP and just cliff diving straight into your implementation when you haven't yet figured out those operational issues. So taking the time to do that first before you bring on the army of system integrator consultants and spending all this money on software that you're not ready for is critical and not enough companies do that. And we see too many companies get bamboozled by the big system integrators, by the software vendors. So this is very, very important takeaway. And then a, a third takeaway here is making sure that the effective controls are in place when we implement new technology. In the case of Revlon, they went live with the new system and they actually reported that they were going to be late in their financial filings because they couldn't get the data that they needed to report their financial results to the SEC. And that's another unacceptable result of the project, in my opinion. Those types of controls should have been defined and figured out ahead of time. And we've seen enough SF4 HANA clients on our side uh, implement the technology to know that it's capable of providing that sort of capability uh, within a timely fashion. So the fact that Revlon was unable to do that tells me that, that something was very wrong with the way that internal controls were uh, baked into the overall uh, solution that was being rolled out. And again, it gets back to that operating model, business blueprint, making sure you've done all that legwork up front before you start slamming in technology and trying to figure out how you're gonna, how you're gonna figure it out later. And then finally, the fourth takeaway here is that a negative ROI should be unacceptable for anyone implementing technology. In the case of, of Revlon, they clearly have not recouped their costs. I don't know what their ROI looks like, but I'm fairly certain it's negative based on all the things that they pointed out and all the write downs they took in their, their financial results as a result of this project. But they, they actually list in my blog, I, I include a, a complete list here. Here's a couple examples of things that they mention as problems they had as a result of their SAP project. They they were unable to recover lost sales. Uh, customer service levels were disrupted. Um, another interesting one is they, they point out that their management team was distracted by the SAP failure and just trying to clean up the mess, that it was cannibalizing their time and their focus on more strategic initiatives. I have no idea how you quantify that, but that had to have some sort of material impact on the results of, of Revlon in the short term and the long term. Um, significant capital and operating expenditures increased. They had difficulty processing payments to vendors. Um, they couldn't fulfill federal, state, and local reporting. Uh, greater than expected expediting shipping fees. So uh, expediting shipments to customers because the inventory wasn't in the right place at the right time and they were having to rush orders and spend all this money rushing orders that they could have just been planning for had the system and the overall business processes been working the way they should have been. And then finally, another thing they mentioned here is the inability to uh, fill customer orders inaccurately on a timely basis or at all. Those are, that's an exact quote from, from the, uh, the SEC filing. And so I, I find that pretty interesting that um, some customer orders just were not filled at all. Um, that, that to me is a big red flag. So these are some of the, uh, some of the big takeaways from the Revlon failure. These are things that can be avoided. I, I can't speak for the Revlon management team or their consultants or whoever was involved in this. But I can't imagine that this is what they signed up for when they went to implement S4 HANA. So these sorts of failures can be avoided. We can take some of these lessons, apply them to our projects, and, and they should be enough to ensure that we get off on a better footing and a better track than what we experienced at Revlon. So I experience you to, or I encourage you to check out the entire blog below. You can, you can click the link below uh, to access the blog on our website. We also have access to our 
uh, guide to a successful SAP S4 HANA transformation, which is relevant whether you're implementing S4 or even other types of systems as well. So uh, I hope this information is helpful. Hope you have a great day and look forward to speaking with you soon. Take care.